and the Museum of Copenhagen. Uh, so um, so uh, this is um, this is a task uh, and um, the tower of uh, the David Museum is uh, is at the Jaffa Gate entrance in the old city of Jerusalem and is actually the museum uh, of Jerusalem as well. And uh, it's here the ancient citadel that has guarded the entrance to Jerusalem for uh, hundreds and uh, hundreds of years uh, and thousands as well. Uh, and this is where the, the full story of Jerusalem is told. So from its prominent location, the Tower of David Museum of Jerusalem is one of the most important locations in the city. And it's actually a national heritage site containing significant archaeological finds dating 3,000 years back, as well as a leading uh, international museum. Um, and uh, since its inception over 30 years ago, the Tower David Museum has evolved into a center of cultural life in Jerusalem. Uh, and as a museum of the city of Jerusalem, it welcomes over uh, half a million uh, um, half a million visitors annually from around the world. That was before the the Corona uh, situation, <laughs> and um, and the museum explains the significance of Jerusalem as the capital of uh, Israel and as a multifaceted city that is uh, holy and significant to uh, three faiths and religion. And it's, a, it's a, um, a city with a message for all people in Israel and around the world and a unique uh, cultural institution um, that really tells the full story of Jerusalem. So in March uh, 2020, um, um, the world came still and the Tower Museum embarked on a historical renewal program of uh, $50 million in which the ancient citadel is being conserved. A new entrance pavilion is being built at the gateway of the old city walls and the permanent exhibition of the history of Jerusalem is being completely um, incorporated with, um, with a, new, um, a new dissemination of uh, these archeological ruins uh, and a new technology. And of course, this is going to be very interesting to hear about uh, this and ever. And for that, we have uh, Elad Lieber, uh, and she's uh, the director and chief curator of the Tower of David Museum for the past decade. So good evening to you. And she's also the chair of the Jerusalem Forum of Cultural Institutions since 2012. Uh, Elliot has also been driving force behind changing the image of the Tower of David Museums and is leading uh, this renewal and conservation project. So it's going to be very interesting to hear about this endeavor. Yes. Second, thank you very much for your uh, introduction. Uh, yes. I will try to tell you all the secrets behind the scenes. <laughs> okay. And uh, the other museum that we're going to hear about uh, uh, today is the Museum of Copenhagen. And the Museum of Copenhagen is a collective memory of all of Copenhagen, the capital in Denmark, and reflect the history of the city and its people. And the permanent exhibition is a walk through the city and a travel through time covering the period from yeah, today uh, until the late Paleolithic uh, 12,000 BC uh, to the present. So there's interactive installations, sounds, voices, film, hands-on experience uh, in an archaeological workshop. I've visited, visited myself, it's very nice. Uh, and alongside with an extensive program of special exhibitions and events, including talks and city walks and pop-up exhibitions and workshop and outreach projects that and debates that brings all these artifacts and history to life. And the museum reopened in, uh, in 2020 and it's new in its new location uh, in the cultural district of Copenhagen, just next to the National Museum here in Copenhagen also. Um, and so it's, it's actually situated in a, in, a, in a cultural hub, so to say. And the new museum building uh, was originally built uh, to the public trustees in 1890s, 
And it's actually a historic complex uh, building containing a rich variety of architectural expressions and ornamentation. And as part of that trans transformation, uh, um, uh, the dissemination then took uh, new heights uh, and uh, with the huge effort to restore these architectural remains in this uh, mansion that it actually is, uh, all this cultural history uh, became integrated within the dissemination of the whole city of Copenhagen. And for that, we are welcoming Louise Jacobsen, who's been the director of the museum in Copenhagen since 2015 and has been in charge of moving the museum to its new address and the restoration of the historical building and of establishing new storage facilities for the collection containing 1 million objects. That's, uh, that's quite an effort. Uh, and then we have also uh, Vivi Lena Andersen, who is head of the exhibitions and the events and public outreach and was the project leader and chief curator, curator of the new museums uh, three years prior to the opening. So that's been an endeavor as well. And that's also gonna be interesting to hear about. So now I will um, give uh, the, uh, the, my, the presentation over to the Museum of Copenhagen. Well, thank Take you. it away. Take it away. <laughs> thank you, Lesa. <laughs> Are we starting with the movie? Yeah, uh, we would like to give you an introduction to the museum uh, via a movie that we've made. Shows and tells very nicely of who we are and what uh, type of museum uh, we're dealing with here. So uh, Caroline, if you could uh, please uh, share our, our video. Thank you. På Københavns Museum finder du historier om hovedstaden. Fra istid til nutid. En levende historie, som forandrer sig, mens vi fortæller den. Historien forandrer sig, fordi vi hver dag får ny viden om byen. Fra både under og over byens asfalt. På museet deler vi de metoder, som kendetegner vores arbejde med byens kulturarv, og nyeste forskning. Og vi inviterer borgere indenfor som medfortællere og medfortolkere af byens historie. En tur gennem museets udstillinger er en vandring gennem tid og sted. En vandring gennem byen og en rejse gennem historien. Københavns Museum ligger i byens centrum, med Rådhuset som nærmeste nabo og som en del af Københavns Kulturkvarter. Københavns Museum åbnede i 2020 i en historisk bygning fra 1894. Den smukke, nyrestaurerede bygning var oprindeligt overformønneri, der varetog formuerne for de umyndige i samfundet, som ugifte kvinder og forældreløse børn. Siden har huset dannet ramme om børneværn, sundhedspleje og kommunens boliganvisning. Et hus skabt til at hjælpe byens borgere. I dag er det et moderne museum, som gør os nysgerrige og klogere på byens historie og de mennesker, der befolkede København før os. Gennem genstande, kunst, lys, lyd, fortællinger, billeder, film, deltagelse og effekter, du kan røre ved. Museet afspejler byens liv og historie og skaber forbindelse mellem nutidens københavnere og byens fortid. Byen er til stede i museet, helt bogstaveligt, i form af afstøbninger af byens detaljer. Vi har udforsket København, taget aftryk af byrummet og dokumenteret byen fra helt nye vinkler, på knæ over Rådhuspladsen, ved indgangen til fristaden Christiania og tæt på spir, porte og statuer. 
Ligesom at byen er til stede på museet, er museet også til stede i byen. Gennem mobile udstillinger, byvandringer, arkeologiske udgravninger, og når vi samarbejder med byens borgere om at indsamle, formidle og forske i byens historie. I arkeologisk værksted arbejder vores besøgende side om side med museets arkeologer og kommer helt tæt på historien og de nyeste fund fra udgravningerne i byen. I haven foran museet gror planter, som er sået og dyrket af børn fra vuggestuer og børnehaver. Planter, som vi kender til fra arkeologiske udgravninger og som blev spist af københavnere for flere hundrede år siden. Skolebørn fortæller historien om deres eget kvarter i museets udstillingsrum om bydelen Bispebjerg. Sammen med kunstnere og museet har de skabt et rum, hvor byen og historien ses i børnehøjde. Byens øjenvidner, som har set, mærket og skabt historiske begivenheder, sætter i rummet kaldet Christiania deres egne ord på en by i konstant forandring. På Københavns Museum er alle velkomne til at gå på opdagelse i byens historie. Både dem, der i forvejen kender København ud og ind, og dem, der møder byen for allerførste gang. Københavns Museum er for alle. Og der er mange måder at gå på museum på. Velkommen til Københavns Museum. Great. Great film. Thanks. Uh, and uh, now we have uh, the Tower of David Museum. Well, let's, also, yes. Let's, uh, I would like to just present, yeah, ah. just the thoughts about the transformation about the museum first. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Please do well, that. Thank you. Thanks. Well, hi, my name is Louisa Jacobsen, and uh, as uh, Lars has said, I am the director of the Museum of Copenhagen. And as we just presented in the film, the museum reopened in new locations in 2020. Moving the museum was part of a strategy that had several targets. One target was to become a museum for all Copenhageners and users of the Danish capital as well as a hub of knowledge about the city's history. The new location in the cultural district of Copenhagen, close to well-known cultural institutions like Tivoli and City Hall and the National Museum, yes, Lasse, <laughs> uh, was selected to support this development and make the museum's exhibitions and other activities more accessible and easy to find for newcomers to the city. Another important target was to make it possible to make an architectural gem accessible to the public. The new museum building originally built to house the public trustee is a historic complex and containing a rich architectural expression and ornamentation related to the public trustees. As part of this transformation to public museum, we have made a huge effort to restore and highlight the architectural qualities and the cultural history of the site as an important part of the museum experience. The building is protected, but we had a very fine dialogue with the Agency for Culture and Palaces about all our plans. For example, we had to move all the floors to place down 15 meters of wires. We moved not original walls, placed climate installation in existing shafts and repainted the building into original colors schemes. An important task within the restoration of the new museum building has been achieving public facilities, for example, the assets for people with disabilities while still respecting the historical architecture. The mission of the new museum is to be the memory of Copenhagen and to reflect the history of the city and its people. We also aim to be mirror of the city and the obvious choice for everyone curious to know more about the city and its histories. 
we aim to contribute to the international profile of Copenhagen and to the cultural life of the city. But first and foremost, we are the museum of the citizens of Copenhagen contributing to the sense of belonging and cultural heritage. The museum should be a place of identification and pride and a place that Copenhageners of all ages, origins, beliefs and occupations frequently visits and uses as a starting point for dialogues about the city's past, present and future. Um, and I would just like to, to add to uh, Louise uh, what she said is that moving into this historic building and we uh, respect this building so much. So I hope that our visitors will get the sense that the new museum in this historical frame is just another chapter of the history of this house that we are in. Uh, so design wise in our exhibitions, we uh, focused very much on that nothing should be standard. Everything, every element in the exhibitions are specially fitted and made for each and every single exhibition room, highlighting the museum and the historical building itself. So every new uh, room is also a new experience. And uh, design-wise, we uh, chose uh, different materials in the uh, the, um, the display cases, for example, uh, that all help to highlight the building itself. For example, we use glass, big, <laughs> a lot of glass that you can see through. So you, we don't hide the rooms and the decoration and the building itself, we're actually highlighting it. And we also use uh, metal that is shining. So when you uh, also meet something that's made of metal, it actually reflects the room you're in as well. So it's mirroring uh, the rooms itself. And then we also use uh, quite modern materials uh, very clearly. So we're not trying to look as if the museum and the exhibitions are from the 19th century century, where it's very clear that it, we come with something modern. So we also, as a contrast to the historical buildings and the wonderful colors, we bring in something that is uh, quite white and bright. So it's very clear to the audience what is the new museum and what is the old historic building. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh... Louise and, and Vivi uh, for this uh, nice presentation and film. And then we will go over to the Tower of David Museum and uh, Aliat Lieber. Uh, and maybe you have a film also um, to show. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yes, let's start with the a short introduction before the film. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Les, and uh, thank you, the people of uh, Embassy of Israel, Davi and uh, Maya, and thank you, Louise and uh, Vivi. It's very interesting to learn the same challenges uh, miles or thousand miles away from you here in uh, Jerusalem. And it's a very exciting moment uh, for us uh, here at the Tower of David Museum. Uh, here with me, I have uh, Caroline Shapiro. She's the director of uh, uh, communication strategy and uh, Rosgen Osar, she's the head of uh, foreign affairs of the museum. And um, they will um, actually uh, show you later the film that they prepared for this uh, meeting. So the Tower of David Museum is the only museum in the world that tells uh, the full and rich story of, of Jerusalem. So as you know, the history of Jerusalem is uh, almost the history of, of the world because everybody, we're here. And we're talking about uh, 4,000 years of rich history and the significance of the city for so many people from all over the world, from, from the three big religions, of course, uh, Jewish people, Christians, and Muslims. 
So it, it's very uh, challenging, as you can imagine. And um, the museum located in the ancient citadel of, of Jerusalem, right near Jaffa Gate, the main gate of the old city, um, the main gate to the four quarters of, of the old city. It was always the, the, the fortress of Jerusalem that protected the city. All the rulers of, the, of Jerusalem used to sit here. So the museum, the citadel is like a microcosmos of the city itself. So it's the perfect look to be the historical museum of, of the city. And um, it, it's interesting to know that um, the first uh, people who decided to transform this building into a museum. It was 100 years ago during the British mandate in Jerusalem, and it was not an historical museum, but it was the first art museum in Israel. But Elad, after the maybe, war... Elad, maybe we can show the film, because uh, yes. then we can see the progression from exactly where you've just Yes, said. I just wanted to you to know that we still don't have any museum, real museum to show you since we're in the middle of our renovation project right now. So it's more construction and preservation and the museum will come after. So you will have to come back and see, please. Welcome to the Tower of David Museum, located in the guard rooms and halls of this magnificently restored ancient citadel at the entrance to Jerusalem's old city. The Tower of David Museum opened in 1989 as the Museum of the History of Jerusalem, telling the full story of the city in innovative ways to people from all over the world. By 2019, we were welcoming more than 500,000 annual visitors day and night, and it had become a platform for contemporary expression in the city. Still, the museum evolved. Many of the needs of our visitors changed, and Jerusalem deserved a vibrant city museum that would communicate the city's cultural scene and its future, as well as its past. It was time for renewal and conservation of the exhibition and site. All the plans were ready, and then the COVID-19 pandemic hit. The museum was forced to close and 90% from our staff went home on unemployment. Suddenly from a very successful museum, we lost our income, but we decided to take the opportunity and begin the journey of the renewal of the museum. This was a crossroads, and as the old saying goes, we learned to make lemonade out of lemons. Since we had no visitors, we would turn the situation to our advantage. Instead of three years, we would speed up the project and renew the museum in less than two. Our contractors, curators, work crews, the whole team was put on a new schedule. We plan to open the doors of the renewed museum in 2022. But first, let's take a look where this is all going to happen. This is the Tower of David, the ancient citadel at the entrance to Jerusalem's old city. It welcomes visitors to the most significant places in the city, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount, and right below it, the Kotel, the Western Wall, and of course, the Churva Synagogue in the Jewish quarter. As you can see, the Tower of David includes the Citadel, the Kishle building, and the entranceway. The new entrance pavilion, designed by the award-winning architectural firm Kimmel Eshkolot, is an airy, glass-enclosed building that blends seamlessly into the historic architecture of the Tower of David. So we are standing in front of the new uh, future uh, Migdal David Plata. This is where uh, the new entrance building is going to be built. It's going to be ex excavated uh, around 1,000 square meters of uh, excavated building, which will be uh, sort of a fold of the landscaping, uh, a building that uh, is trying not to be seen, trying to, to disappear in order to, to leave the, the impact of the, of the architectural monument of the existing building. The new entrance pavilion includes a terraced cafe, outdoor seating areas, and oblique, 
providing for the first time a shady and welcoming public area in the entrance to the old city. As you saw, we are digging down 10 meters to create a multi-level building that will house a unique contemporary gallery. This will be the only gallery for art and design in the entire old city and will provide a platform for contemporary expression in Jerusalem. Our next stage of the project is the new educational center right under Jaffa Gate Square. And I'm excited that the municipality of Jerusalem and the government of Israel are matching partners. The Education and Learning Center will be built within the conserved historic Roman Byzantine archaeological site that lies across the road from the museum. 1,500 years ago, this area served as the entrance to Jerusalem. We're standing underneath the main road that connects the city center of Jerusalem with the southern uh, neighborhoods. Uh, this road was built around 20 years ago. It was hanged on pillars uh, just above this uh, magnificent uh, space, a space which is uh, full of uh, rich uh, archaeological uh, and historical stories, uh, aging from the uh, Roman era to the, to the Byzantine era. Just at the back, we have the Byzantine uh, bathhouse. Uh, which has a uh, very, very impressive uh, remaining uh, walls. Just at the bottom, going very deep uh, down under the road, there are remains of a, a Byzantine commercial street, a street that uh, used to be one of the entrances to the Roman uh, city. These large pillars which um, support the, the road above us actually uh, created a huge space that we can use, such as uh, education wing for the museum, a big auditorium which will have a beautiful view of the old city of Jerusalem. So this gap actually between the road and the old walls, uh, which was neglected, it is a part of the national, uh, national park uh, which surrounds the old city. And uh, this project will actually revive this space as a very welcoming public space, public open space. Visitors will be able to enter the old city through this uh, new complex. On the bigger scale, one of the main goals of this project is to connect the, the entrance of, of Yafo Gate with Teddy Park, which is just to the west-south of the old city, and actually enabling a new accessible way uh, for tourists which will come uh, through the park, uh, through the uh, excavated Byzantine street, the Byzantine bath, the new hall of uh, Tower of David and then up through a new elevator uh, to Jaffa Gate and to the old city. This new center will provide the proper facilities for the thousands of children and adults who come to learn about Jerusalem and actually feel the ancient stones and see the historic sites. Back in the museum courtyard, you can see that we are laying new cables and infrastructure that will allow us to install interactive and digital exhibits in our new exhibition. It also allows us to upgrade our air conditioning and heating systems to make a modern and accessible museum. For the first time, the Citadel of Jerusalem will be accessible to all with two glass elevators that provide access to almost every level of the historic site. As you know, all of Jerusalem is a huge archaeological area. And before we will start building or put our own foundation, we have to see who put them here before us. The Israeli Antiquity Authority is overseeing the whole project. I would like to introduce you to Amit Re'em, Jerusalem Regional Archaeologist. Here we have epic battles, historical events, uh, conspiracies. All the archaeology of Jerusalem is right here, from the Judean Kingdom until the British Mandate and modern times. And the renovation that is taking place right now here in the, cit in the citadel enable us, the archaeologists, to reveal all this glory of Jerusalem. It's wonderful. 
It's amazing. It's a piece of history of Jerusalem, and everything is right here in the Tower of David. The new permanent exhibition will tell the full story of Jerusalem, looking at it chronologically as well as thematically, and bringing to life the stories and people of the city. We will be using interactive and immersive technologies, as well as introducing original artifacts excavated on site from Jerusalem's long and colorful history. As part of this, the Tower of David Museum is committed to conserving this historic heritage site. This is the largest conservation project taking place in Israel today. Here you can see a conservation crew that is working on the Fassa El Tower, built by Herod the King over 2,000 years ago. And if we're talking about King Herod, we can visit another part of the project, the Herodian Royal Palace of Jerusalem. Right here in the Kishle excavation, this is going to be our new archaeological wing of the museum. The incredible site was excavated and reveals every layer in Jerusalem's history, going back to 800 BCE, the time of the kings of Judah. Together with the well-known design firm of local projects in New York, who designed the 9-11 Memorial Museum, we have designed a multimedia experience that safeguards the integrity of the archaeological site, but allows visitors to feel as though they are part of a quest to find the treasures of Jerusalem. Thousands of years of history come alive in an immersive experience. The new site will include two galleries, a rooftop viewing area, welcoming seating areas, as well as the multimedia experience. The opportunity to be part of this wonderful addition to the legacy of Jerusalem is incredible. We are waiting for the return of our visitors to invite them to enjoy the new museum. Thank you. So there's uh, still a lot of work to do here outside, but it's a very exciting moment for all of us. Yeah, it looked really, really, really great, I must say. And do you want to say something more, Elliot? Um, uh, yes. Um, actually, you couldn't see um, what's happening uh, in um, the, um, the museum. Uh, stuff for what they are doing um, and for the first time uh, this museum is going to be a real museum because the previous one was not based on any collection the concept was uh, um, that the, the jewel the, the original is the citadel itself and the previous museum was very didactic museum based on replicas models illustrations maps and so on historical museum uh, but um, with our curators, we decided to change this concept. So uh, we have now a new collection uh, based, of course, on archaeology, but not just archaeology, because the Tower of David is the symbol of, of Jerusalem, the symbol of the city. And um, we are going to uh, create a, a new gallery, the story of, of the site. And of course, talking about modern Jerusalem, we are going to use um, archives and photos and of course, um, a lot of, of uh, artifacts to show the modern history of, of this city. So it's very challenging since uh, the indoor spaces of the museum are still small. We're talking about uh, 2000 meters, which is mm. quite, quite modest. Yes. Um, but uh, we hope with the changing exhibition to be able to enrich the story of Jerusalem every year again and again. Yeah, thank you very much. And now uh, there's some questions uh, that uh, I have, we have prepared. Uh, so that's for both of you and then you can then you can add in, but uh, uh, the first question is about uh, what do you think the role of the city museum is today? Um, 
and I guess that's for both of you. And and uh, what are you doing in order to realize this vision? So the role and how do you realize this uh, this vision? And I guess there's also a matter of relevance in it. So who who wants to start? Well, I I would like to start. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks, Ainat, for uh, the fine presentation. I think we were just like, uh, perhaps with less as well, uh, starting a trip uh, just to, to see it. Um, well, thank you, Lasse. Uh, that's a great question and uh, very relevant. Uh, in today's uncertain times, uh, I think museums can act, well, a little poetic, but uh, like an, an anchor in the storm. Um, it's not only institutions where forgotten objects go to enjoy their final years, um, and we have to collect and restore objects and research and develop exhibitions. Um, we think the museum is more relevant today than it has ever been, because uh, I think the museums are able to reflect uh, and form our society uh, and give us all a historic common platform um, and perspective, not to become so polarized in discussion to gender or race or religion, for example. Museums give us a chance to look into the past as well as the future to see where we've been and where we might go. We think that city museums uh, has indeed the possibility to bring communities together and provide a sense of community offering a way to get to know the history of a particular area. Um, museums can also bring people together in a more little way through public events or workshops and lectures. And the exhibitions tell us stories about how our communities uh, and our cultures came to be, and without them, those stories could be forgotten. So city museums play a crucial role in preserving local culture and with careful documentation and artifact preservation, a culture can be recorded and remembered regardless of its future. So it can also be shared and understood by those from different cultural backgrounds. We try to welcome anyone in the new museum with our activities and exhibitions, children, people who have just come to the city and people who lived here for ages. Uh, we have a uh, one weekday free of charge, for example. So everyone has the opportunity to visit their story, not due to the income. And uh, the, we do this because we think that everyone's voice is important in the dialogue of the city and the problems and possibilities that every city has to perhaps solve them and to live together, uh, understanding and respecting each other. Great. And, Great. and what about uh, you, Alec? I can say that uh, I agree with everything that Louise just said. And even more than that, um, since Jerusalem is a multicultural city and we cannot ignore the, the conflict that we still, um, I think, uh, feel here every day. And uh, since um, the Tower of David Museum located right in between East Jerusalem and West Jerusalem, between the old city and the new city. Um, so this kind of city museum in Jerusalem must be a bridge between people and between communities and bringing them here together. And um, of course, we are trying to be a platform for them to tell their stories, the communities, to let them bring their own narrative here and be able to include every single, you know, uh, person or, or community or neighborhood or, um, or story since it's so rich and um, laying on the rich history of, of the past, we must, uh, we must be uh, vibrant and modern uh, museum and be able to engage the young generation uh, with the story of, of their city. And um, 
It's, it's, it's very challenging because uh, unlike many other places in the world, I must say that here, the past of this city will impact everyday life and will impact the future of our life here in Israel. So it's about uh, identity. So um, I think uh, the City Museum of Jerusalem is, is taking a very important role in, in this country. Yeah. yeah, building the bridges between the different people living there and the same in Copenhagen, I guess there's also different kinds of subcultures also there where you Mm -hmm. where you tell that story, making it relevant. Uh, the other question I have for you both is, uh, what was then your biggest challenge in in this renewal project? I guess the Copenhagen Museum is a little bit f further than, than you are in, in, in Israel, but, but, uh, but uh, what kind of challenges does that give? I mean, how long time frame are you working? When did you decide to do this? And, and I guess, what kind of compromises did you have to discuss in order to reach the actual goal? Um, because, I mean, that could also create tension also uh, within uh, the project. So how, 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 did you, how did you cope with that? I guess that you are in different uh, places, but, uh, but I don't know who wants to start us uh, answering that question. Maybe we'll keep the order in Copenhagen. With yes, stuff. exactly. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, well, we, we got how do you... to uh, people arriving in wheelchairs. Uh, or also people that have uh, different uh, kind of uh, challenges, whatever they may be. Uh, but what we've uh, tried to is to, of course, make the assets as good as possible uh, without compromising the, the protective building too much. But that also means that we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't got the most, uh, the perfect, uh, a placement for our um, lift or escalator, for example, uh, but it's there. So we have the, the possibility, but it's not placed in a way that we think is, is, the, is perfect, but that's the compromise anyways. Uh, and then we've uh, had, uh, when also in the, the uh, planning phase, we uh, of course have the challenges with this protective building, um, it, well, it has a door, a front door, and that opening, that decided how large the objects we were able to exhibit should be. So even though we have one million objects in our storage facilities, and we have huge objects as well, uh, we have um, uh, objects that were so huge that we cannot exhibit them physically in our museum building because the access the, to the, the access which is just the main front door is not large enough so we can't take out windows we can't tear down walls and we can't uh, take off the roof to to bring in these large objects in our museum so also when curating uh, which which uh, objects should we exhibit? Actually, the, the door frame decided how large it could be. <laughs> so we made uh, quite some compromises on that account as well. Yeah. And what about at the, the Tower of David Museum? Yes, um, everything sounds very familiar to me. Um, so uh, one is, of course, from the physical aspect, we are also talking about uh, accessibility and, and we're talking about uh, development in inside and heritage buildings. So in on one hand, we want to engage a young generation with the story, with archaeology. It's just like science, it's complicated. So uh, we want them to enjoy, we want technology, but still we want to keep the beauty of the building, the authenticity of, of it. So it was a great... Um, 
the challenge and compromise um, the balance between the new and, and the old. Uh, but still, uh, I think the great challenge here is, is not uh, the physical aspect, it's still the content because um, Jerusalem is, is in the heart of so many people from all over the world and, and in, inside this city, Christians, Muslims, and Jewish people. And we actually um, have a special inter-religion committee leaders, uh, religious leaders from, from, from the city. And we are sitting together thinking of every single word and sentence to be able actually to invite everybody to this museum that they can find their own narrative and to be sensitive enough to be able to include everything and tell the academic stories as, as we as we know it. So it's it's really still a great challenge for us. Great, thank you very much. And uh, uh, then I have uh, um, a final question here. So uh, now, uh, I mean, in Denmark, uh, the COVID situation is that it's it's over in Denmark. Now everything is, uh, all, the all the these, uh, the restrictions they they are over in Denmark, so there's full full power ahead. Uh, but uh, but um, what do you think that the impact is of this COVID situation and and especially the design of future exhibitions? I mean, do you have to incorporate that? We had huge discussions here at the National Museum of how we should do this because who knows? Maybe uh, in a year time we might be in the same uh, situation. So. Does that uh, influence your choices uh, also in future exhibitions? I mean, is there any perspectives on that, Copenhagen? Yes, uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and as you said, Lasse, um, I, I would actually phrase it a little bit more like in Denmark, we're ignoring COVID-19 right now. <laughs> we're, we're just playing that it's not there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we have a, a very open uh, society right now and open museums, and uh, but people are still getting sick and still getting COVID-19. So we're still affected by it. And even though we don't have any uh, legal restrictions um, right now, then uh, we at the museum chose that we will keep and uh, will continue to have the, the, the containers with the uh, the, the, the gel so you can sanitize your hand during your visit. So that is still placed all over the museum and it will continue to, to be so. And, uh, and also the screen between our uh, staff uh, at the front desk um, and uh, our guest arriving is also gonna continue to be there as a permanent installation simply to, to bring um, some comfort and some uh, hopefully calming people down when arriving as well, because we can see that uh, it's not forgotten, even though we're playing that it's not there. So we're trying to acknowledge that it is still a part of us now. And then uh, as you asked, Lasse, how does this affect our future exhibitions? And we are, of course, working with future exhibitions all the time, like five years ahead. And uh, I can feel that in my work, I'm very, very much affected by it. So I'm still thinking about, would people like to touch this? Or would they try to interact with this in a different way? Um, and we have also to make sure that they walk in the same direction and not facing each other. And they have to... Uh, right now, I just saw a design proposal from one of our designers who made an installation where you have to walk into like some small rooms. And I mentioned that it's really nice that you can see how many people is in there at one time, because that is just, uh, it's very nice for us to know, okay, there are five people in there. Do I want to enter or do I decide not to? Whereas uh, for two years ago, I might say, oh, it's great. It's just a big black box. It's uh, super that you don't know <laughs> what you're walking into. So that has definitely changed my way of thinking uh, uh, an exhibition now, mm. definitely. Yeah. yeah. And also, if I can just uh, and one more thing, because uh, so so uh, what I was mentioning about that would people like to touch things and so on. 
what we're actually experiencing is that while we, during these two years of COVID-19, tried to be very online and very digital, then we've actually experienced right now that we really miss the physical interaction, they miss things to touch and to interact with physically. So uh, we shouldn't just uh, throw that away, uh, not at all. I, so my, I think that our task is to make the experience as safe as possible, but still to, to make sure that people can actually touch and interact uh, as well. Great, let's uh, forward so for the here, future. So here in the, the Tower of David, uh, the COVID actually changed our mind at all, because uh, you have to know that before the COVID, most of our visitors, uh, about 70%, were from abroad. They were tourists who came to, to, the, to Israel and to Jerusalem. And um, since uh, our capacity was limited and they, you know, the markets are different and they preserve, you know, they had tickets um, in advance. So it, it was the majority here. And suddenly, uh, the beginning of 2020, they disappeared. So uh, we found out that we, we must look for uh, the locals. Uh, it, it's an, it was a absolutely a new audience for us. Um, and we opened the, the museum after the first lockdown here in Israel, June 2020. Uh, with a special exhibition, musical exhibition about uh, about Israeli music, and and they came, and um, it it actually changed our mind because we realized that we are not just a national or international museum uh, for people who are coming to visit Jerusalem from all over the world. There are people here in our city that we want to engage them and bring them here. So we developed a new, um, I think, state of mind. And it will stay also for the future. We still have to find uh, uh, the way to be more local and, and to talk about this city, um, about society, about communities of, of Jerusalem, not just for the history and not just for, for people um, who will come, come back uh, to Jerusalem from abroad. This is a great challenge that the COVID actually brought here. So challenges and also new opportunities with new target groups. That's very positive, I guess. Uh, so now uh, I'm, I'm open for questions. Is there anybody from, from the audience of really, really uh, scholared people in dissemination and from different museums I see? Do you have any questions for, for uh, the two museums and the representative there? Is there anybody who has? Yes, Hukon has raised the hand. Yes, hello, it's uh, Håkon Glorsta from the Museum of Cultural History in Oslo. I very, thank you very much for two very interesting and, um, and good presentations of the two museum. I really appreciated it. But I was wondering, and this is a question for both museums, could you say something more about international collaboration with all the museums? That would be interesting to have, hear some more about. Great. So, Copenhagen. I, do you mean in the planning phase uh, up to how, yeah, when we opened the new museum, how we uh, collaborated with other museums? Is that correct understood? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, yes, we of course has, uh, have a network of uh, different uh, museums, uh, but also when uh, we were opening this uh, new museum, we uh, did uh, different types of study tours <laughs> where we uh, physically traveled around uh, Europe, basically, mainly, and uh, visited different types of museums and talked to uh, many, many different types uh, of museum uh, staff and directors as well. And we were very much interested in uh, seeing how did other city museums disseminate their story 
Uh, so we, uh, and I also think that we've ended up with solutions that it's, we didn't just copy paste anything, but we, we found very much inspiration in other museums in, in how they disseminate uh, the stories. And especially the this challenge of, which was also mentioned before, the challenge of having this uh, history that goes all the way back to the Ice Age, but how do we make it relevant? And, uh, and I think the way that we've uh, brought in uh, the Copenhageners themselves and their own stories are also uh, an effect from, uh, from those uh, discussion and talks and visits that we've had prior to the opening, definitely. Mm. Um, so as a curator, um, in, in the, I think, last three decades, uh, I'm a member in ECOM, the International Committee of Museums, and uh, especially CAMOC, City Museums. Um, so, of course, I'm keeping in touch with, with my, my colleagues uh, all over the world, and I'm, I'm visiting the conferences. It's very important to me to learn from uh, colleagues from all over the world. And it's a great, great inspiration for us, just like the London Museum or um, the New York City Museum and, and Amsterdam Museum, many, many others. And uh, I must uh, tell you that uh, you will going to find here many solutions that we took from museums all over the world. And, um, and I, I hope to even enlarge this uh, collaboration in, in the future to be able to exchange exhibitions and, um, and of course, um, maybe to, to bring uh, ECOM to, to Jerusalem uh, after the opening of the museum for, for a special conference of, of city museums. Great. So is there any more questions from the audience here? Otherwise, I think that we have now been engaged in an hour, 60 minutes. Last may I ask one question? One yes, of question course you maybe. may. Something more particular, but I'd like to know from the different museum directors, why do they think that their museum is particular? What makes it unique? Unique? Hmm. So that's one for you, Copenhagen. Of course, Copenhagen is unique. <laughs> well, first of all, it's uh, the story of Copenhagen. I think it, it's very unique. Um, I think at the museum, we have we have a lot of finds from the from the from Copenhagen and a lot of stories from the Copenhageners, which is which is quite unique. You you just only find it right here. So that's that's. And then personally, I have uh, six years of uh, collaboration with all the wonderful staff at the Museum of Copenhagen, and that's that's quite unique. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, it? yes, the Tower of David Museum, um, of course, there are many museums uh, in Jerusalem, especially, and of course, in Israel, and many important uh, archaeological sites um, all over Jerusalem. But first of all, this is the only archaeological site that became a museum. Uh, and um, I think the combination between uh, the, the past and, and the present and even the future, because it's a museum, it's, it's a symbol of the city, it's an important site, it's a cultural institution to be here inside the ancient walls for, for a concert or for a festival. It's, 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 it brings um, Jerusalem in so many aspects and many layers inside the skin even. So this is the uniqueness of, of the Tower of David being uh, um, actually um, the most, I think, interesting uh, institution of Jerusalem because uh, we hold history, archeology, span art, music, fashion, food, and, and the perfect location. And I must tell you, it's the most beautiful site in Jerusalem and even in Israel. And I'm we, very objective. <laughs> we, must, we must come and, and visit uh, you and, and, and see it uh, someday. 
Uh, that's that's for sure. I'm 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 very hooked up to do that. Uh, so, is there any more questions? Otherwise, I would say thank you to you all and to the Embassy of Israel for organizing this webinar, and thank you for the bureau also for sending all the things out and and um, yeah. Then I don't have much more to add other than I think that we should all visit both of these really, really nice museums. Yes. I've only seen one of them, but I want to see the other one as well. I, I must tell you that I'm waiting to visit uh, Copenhagen and I'll tell you why, because Borgen was my favorite uh, series. And uh, <laughs> I really, I really want now to come and see your museum. It looks wonderful. Yeah, it's just next to Christian's ball. Yeah, I'm going to show you the ball. <laughs> 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 okay, yes. So, uh, thank you very much. And um, yeah, thank you, Les. <laughs> and now I will see you, you all in Copenhagen and maybe in Jerusalem as well. Oh, no. I really invite you all to come and, uh, and visit. Uh, the great opening is going to be um, next spring, spring 23. So it's quite here soon. Great. OK. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was very interesting. I'm going to close it, but thank you to anyone else who is still here. I'm going to close the link now because I'm you. still. Coming.